These mummies have been x-rayed in the past. They have been examined uh, many times before. With the latest uh, examinations, we have a new level of understanding of their history. A few years ago, we approached Barbara Lawson to, to CT scan the mummies here at McGill, and that was done at the, Neuro the Montreal Neurological Institute. And uh, we've been examining those scans uh, for the last couple of years, and, and there's been several publications now about that. They're an interesting bunch. We've realized we're turning over a lot of misconceptions held about these mummies. We now know when uh, uh, their dates, uh, their approximate dates, of course, of when they would have been alive in Egypt. We have better information in terms of their age. We have better in information in terms of how they were mummified. And, uh, and also their physical conditions. This woman is 20, this woman is 50, this young man is 18 to 24 years old. It gives people a better sense of what it is we can get out of taking a mummy into a, a, a hospital and putting it through the, the CAT scan that, um, that we couldn't otherwise do without unwrapping them. Uh, and that's horribly destructive, we don't do that anymore. Well, they used to do things by having to open up the bandages and take the skull out and either make a mold of the skull, which means you're handling the skull and the handling of the skull will usually damage it in the process. And of course, removing the bandages would damage it in the process. Uh, now we're able to do it. It's, it's a non-intrusive procedure where we can actually do a scan without cutting the bandages and make an exact model of that skull and then do a forensic reconstruction without ever having to cut open those bandages. I take this image file, I load it into the 3D printer, and uh, we print out that image. Now the image is printed out on, basically it's a powder, and we print out one layer at a time, each layer being approximately the thickness of a piece of paper. So to do a whole skull, it takes approximately six hours to print out the skull. We were fortunate to have the tissue depth measurements for the Egyptians and we used Egyptian measurements on these skulls according to the anthropologist. So once we have the tissue depth measurements on, then we have studies uh, that go according to the bone structure of a person's face. The hair, uh, Andrew actually detected the white hair for this, uh, this individual within these scans that he has. The hairstyle on uh, 2720 was taken from Faustina the first uh, from a picture on a coin. And this was done because Andrew Wade was able to detect the actual braids within the scans and the hairstyle within the scans. And according to that particular time, uh, that's why we chose this particular hairdo. The whole basis of this is that we're doing facial approximations and the reason we do the facial approximation technically according to this information is that at the end result is supposed to be that the person could be recognized by a close friend or family member. We're very interested in having the public come in and look at these things, see what it is we do, see what the science is behind it. The work we do has a bearing on modern medicine as well. It helps the, the engineers improve their techniques for rapid prototyping, for uh, CT scanning, uh, and it really pushes the envelope for, for a lot of those technologies. For McGill, it's a means of uh, a very interesting public interface, having the latest uh, scientific data, but also have a way, a compelling way of presenting this to the public to see what people do uh, scientifically and when they study artifacts and, uh, and mummies. Working on this project has been extremely enjoyable. The shame of it is, is that these are 20 year olds and, and they were dead at, by age 20. So, you know, maybe as far as the Egyptian life is concerned, we are giving them a bit of an afterlife, who knows? <laughs>